In today's video, I'm going to show you the three biggest mistakes I see people make on LinkedIn, whether it's business owners, whether it's creators trying to get new clients. I see them make them. And the paradox is, is that these mistakes are actually quite hard to spot. And the majority of people make these mistakes because they think it's driving their business forward when actually it's hindering them as well. And I've known this and used the insights I'm going to give to you to generate 2K deals, 3K deals, break the five figures in a month mark, break the five figures in a day mark just by using LinkedIn. I'm going to give you these insights for free because you need to learn from them. So these aren't just high level insights. Get a pen and paper, take notes on this video and let's move over to my laptop so I can show you them. So mistake number one, most people when they create content on LinkedIn just write an opinion which they think will appeal to the masses rather than it being their own opinion. So they'll say things like An, a leader should have these qualities and, you know, employers should do this and do this, but they don't do that at all. Instead, what they're trying to do is just get likes on their content, which shows through. So a good example of this is when Chris Rock got slapped by Will Smith. It was shocking for the world. You want to see the amount of people that took to LinkedIn to use the Will Smith, Chris Rock situation to their own advantage so they could pitch their business. People were saying things like Will Smith demonstrated that he is not a real leader. If you do want leadership coaching, you should should apply here and basically it's very inauthentic and their audience can like see straight through it so you see how that's having like the opposite effect to what they actually want they're doing it to pitch their business but really people get turned off by that in fact I even made a post on it and I wrote so many people on LinkedIn over the last few days I've used the Will Smith Chris Rock situation to segue into a pitch for their business and I did it as like kind of a you know a funny sort of tongue-in-cheek calling them out type of way and uh, it actually got me leads this post and the reason why is because I came off as way more authentic than those other people and that's basically what my whole content strategy is and when you're authentic people end up liking you and your personal brand but most people get it completely backwards they think I should make posts which just generally agree with the mass of people and people will instantly like me I'll fit right in or I'll get leads it doesn't work like that a good example of this is when the whole um, Ukrainian and Russian crisis kicked off you know it's obviously terrible and people want to show support however they can which is totally fine but you want Wanted to see the amount of people on LinkedIn who would upload like a picture of themselves crying or like video of themselves sobbing and things and saying things like my heart goes out to all these people in Ukraine and you gotta wonder right how authentic is actually that content of people uploading pictures and videos of themselves crying on LinkedIn right like because if you think about it this person has set a camera up started crying, got the lighting all perfect, taken a photo, made content about it, uploaded to LinkedIn. This is not authentic. A big principle about creating content which actually helps you generate business is being authentic in your thoughts. If you look at Grant Cardone or Ty Lopez, some of the best marketers in the world, they don't care whether they get loads of negative media or negative press about certain things because they just say their opinion and they've generated more online sales than most people in the space. So there's a lesson in that. Number two, if we come over to Austin's profile here and look at his content, you know, he seems like a great guy and he has massive reach on social media because he has 1.2 million followers and like he's been posting for a while and he says that like um, is some of his posts get over 200k views and all this, right? So he's got massive reach. But what you tend to find is that people in the comment section of his posts are just commenting on his post and supporting him, not because they actually want to support him, but because they want the reach themselves. So there's this thing on LinkedIn that if you comment on big creators posts, sometimes people will view your profile and like it will help your reach when you create content as well. So it almost rewards people for commenting on other people's posts, right? So all people get in the head is that like Austin's a popular creator. I'm going to go and comment on his post. Looking forward to this. You are the MVP. Just registered. All signed up. Exciting. Good stuff, Austin. 
please teach me thanks for sharing some of these comments will be genuine but what i'm trying to say is a lot of these people are also trying to build their audience and what they're actually trying to do is siphon views from austin here and that's the sole purpose of why they are commenting on his posts they're not commenting because they're actually interested they're commenting out of a purely self-interested perspective only to help themselves and if we think of like first order and second order consequences first order consequences is that yeah i'm going to get some reach on my posts because some of these followers will then come over to my profile and start following some of my content and they think about the first order consequences of this but the second order consequences is people will only buy from you if they think you are authentic and you're not really being authentic if you're leaving comments like this on posts purely for your own self-interested here and believe me i've been in marketing for a long time more people can see through inauthentic actions than you would think so how i do it is i'm literally commenting on posts where i can add value and that's part of being authentic and a lot of people become clients of mine because they think i'm authentic so this is a big key for instance, we've got Kelty here, you know, she's a clarity coach. She does uh, for six figure and beyond business leaders. And she was basically asking about that. If refund policies are worth it, what we all thought. And I left a super valuable comment here. I explained that I tested it and it does increase conversion rates. However, the people it attracts aren't really action takers. So you may get more refunds. And I also said one of the people who've taught me in the online space has made over nine figures. And they have also agreed with me and said that guarantees pushes people over the line. But generally, it doesn't attract action takers and you're attracting people who are very price focused. So this is a comment which could literally save Kelty a lot of money here, a lot of money, a lot of time and effort and a lot of refunds as well. And you see like I've commented on it just to give value. I don't give a damn. It's not readable. I'm not saying like things which are super popular opinions. I'm just telling her what works. And if you look through my post history and my comment history as well, you will see examples of this. And again, my followers will see this and see, oh, Rob's actually genuinely trying to help people here. He's actually being very authentic. He's not saying things which are just popular. If you say things which are just popular, for sure you're gonna get more followers. But what you really want is more buyers, more people very interested in your service and doing it the first approach is a surefire way to be completely inauthentic and people spot that and see it and smell it a mile off now number three i'm actually going to go and share some of my course with you here and i'm sat with a client i was coaching and i you know i've blanked out bits of his information i blanked out his face as well but basically this client is a client which has done over seven figures setting up his business you know he's a very advanced client he's helping other people achieve seven figures as well and i'm trying to teach him how to dm people because he's struggling with it and this isn't just him you know he's really put himself out there but a lot of people struggle with sending dms as well they either come off too pitchy or they don't come off pitchy at all and to tell you the truth there's a fine line here so i'm going to play you the recording and let you hear it so we've got uh, the first person uh whole business has been treating you well Lots of clients, but still tight on recruitment. Do you know this person? Yeah. All right. W what do you think this person thinks, right? Yeah. I. It, what I'm trying to do there is say that, you know, I've got my own cleaning business. I work with other cleaning business yeah. owners. This is what everyone is saying. So I'm trying to, sh I'm, I've gone in too hard, haven't I? But I'm trying to show... Uh, they're, they're definitely having this problem, but it's a bit presumptive, presumptive, isn't it? So imagine me and you stood in a bar next to each other. We don't know each other. We're both ordering drinks at the bar. And I lean over to you. I'm like, hey, man, how's it going? Um, and I'm like, uh, you know, nice drink this is. How's your LinkedIn prospecting going? Uh, you'd be like, get the f*** out of it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you would. Yeah. So we yeah. have to base these conversations, play them out in our head. How would I, over the shoulder, speak to this person? And this is what I talk about in the prospecting module. All our first messages to, to do are to start a conversation. We can mm. literally start a conversation on any subject, right? And pivot mm. into it later, right? Mm. Because 
we don't want them closing the door in the face before we've even started speaking to them. So do you get where I was coming from in that most people are not used to sending DMs, no matter what experience level they are. And what happens is they come off in the friend zone or they come off too aggressive. And like I gave in that example there, imagine going to a bar and starting a conversation with the person next to you trying to go straight for the problem. Don't do this. Warm them up a little bit. Explain to them exactly what it is you do. Once you have got permission from them and found that they actually might potentially be interested in your service, this what I'm giving you now is high level insight into to LinkedIn and it's how I've been able to thrive in a super super saturated market like for LinkedIn coaches it's very very saturated and I'm not just going to give you the generic advice of like create a LinkedIn profile write a headline which appeals to people I'm going to tell you what actually works because I want you guys to thrive as I have done as well if you want to book a call with me I'm going to put a link on the screen now I hope you enjoyed this video take care see you in the next one leave me a comment let me know what you think as well